Hey guys, welcome to our weekly Friday video. Sometimes there's a bonus video on Tuesday, but today it's Friday and we are revisiting the NVIDIA GDS 250 in SLI. We had a look at this graphics card in a previous video. We used the more period correct Athlon 64 X2 6400 plus processor and I got a lot of comments that the processor is holding back these two graphics cards. So in this video we're doing a couple of things. We will have a look at Windows XP Retro Gaming and we will compare the performance with a fast Phenom 2 X2 570 overclocked to 4 GHz. So we will find out if the Athlon 64 was really holding back the graphics cards. But we will find out that these video cards are a little bit bored with Windows XP games. So we will swap out the processor. We will install a Phenom 2X4, the 965, running at 3.6 GHz, also overclocked to 4 GHz. Then we will install Windows 10 and we will try out a few more modern games. So let's dive straight in and have a look at the test system. So we're using a modern AIM3 Plus motherboard with the AMD 990FX chipset. So that chipset is SLI certified and it does support two graphics cards with the full uh, 16x PCI Express lens on both video cards. So that makes sure that these cards are basically running at the full potential. Now we can also see that there's something interesting going on with the cooling. I had a lot of issues and we will talk about that later in more detail. Here we can see the cards uh, in close detail and here we've got the SLI bridge. There is room for a third card and I actually do have a third card. Unfortunately things didn't go quite uh, to plan so we will have a look at three-way SLI in a future video. We're using 16 gigabytes of RAM running at 1600 megahertz with 99924 timings. We've got the AMD 125 watt thermal solution. We're using a dual band AC Wi Fi adapter, especially for Windows 10. That helps me with fast downloads for all the games. We've got a 500 gigabyte SSD. Um, this is quite a nifty tool, just a power button reset, and it's got a hard drive and power LEDs integrated as well. And this is also a good opportunity to use this beast of a power supply, 90 plus gold certified, which of course is rubbish. Um, this is one of those uh, power supplies from China meant for Bitcoin mining. I got this a while ago. We did a video review on this last year and it's got a combined wattage of uh, 1600 watts. And uh, brace yourself, this power supply comes with all the cables for not six, not eight, not 10, for a total of 12 8 pin PCI Express power connectors. So, yes, you can power a ton of video cards with this. Now, uh, the fan is ridiculously loud, it doesn't have any uh, control, it just goes at full blast. But for the purpose of doing uh, video reviews and uh, yeah, testing SLI configurations, it did the, uh, the job just fine, so I'm happy I have it. And yeah, it will come in handy in future projects as well, looking at uh, three-way SLI with uh, more powerful video cards and other projects I have planned. Before we check out Windows 10 and some of the more modern games, let's start at the beginning. So I installed Windows XP first. I'm using the easy to boot project which lets me install Windows XP of a USB flash drive. This project also includes the SATA AHCR drivers so we're getting good performance and maximum compatibility with SSDs for example. In terms of drivers you can get most of them from the Gigabyte website but the chipset drivers I downloaded the latest version directly from AMD. I then downloaded the latest NVIDIA GeForce drivers directly from the NVIDIA website and while installing them you get this lovely message telling you that this system is SLI capable. And that's really what this video is all about. So uh, I do these projects because I can play with high-end hardware from back in the day that is yeah, fairly affordable uh, these days. Back in the day the prices were outrageous and yeah, the processors did kind of hold back an SLI system as well. You had to play at extremely high resolutions and with uh, high anti-aliasing settings and whatnot to get the most out of, this, out of these graphics cards. And here we are in the NVIDIA driver. 
I'm about to turn on SLI. You can see that I actually have three GDS250 cards installed. The plan was initially to check out three-way SLI, but I was in for a surprise. It turns out that three-way SLI is not supported in Windows XP. Now I also ran into a few other issues so ultimately time was running out and therefore in this video we will only look at uh, standard SLI with just two cards but for a future video we will definitely check out three-way SLI. So I then installed all the usual games that I use for Windows XP benchmarking and yeah I quickly noticed that something was a little bit off. I would get quite different results in when I ran 3 d Mark uh, multiple times. In the beginning the results seemed fine, but over time they would slow down a little bit. So in such a situation I install MSI Afterburner and I turn on all the monitoring stuff so I can keep an eye out on temperatures, but also SLI scaling and uh, all the other details. And we can see it here on the screen. This is Half-Life 2, Lost Coast, and look at that. Both GPUs running at over 100 degrees and the fan speeds also, yeah, they're screaming at 100%, they're going full blast. So I knew straight away there's something dodgy going on with the cooling and yeah, it turns out that these particular cards have some pretty tall coolers and in this situation I had three cards installed and the... Um, two first cards, uh, the cards in the front, they were being utilized and they were basically suffocating. That didn't get enough airflow. So one option I had was move the second card further down. That will give both cards enough uh, space to breathe properly. However, by doing that, I noticed that the second card now runs with only 8x PCI Express lanes and I wanted to make sure that both uh, video cards are running at their full potential. So I removed the cooler, cleaned the thermal paste, and they all got some fresh Arctic MX4. And then to fix the cooling situation, I basically removed the fan, the cooling from uh, all the graphics cards, and I just put a 120 millimeter fan on top of the video cards. Now that worked okay. We're still getting fairly high temperatures, especially in crisis. That game still got both GPUs over 90 degrees, but in most other games, we reached only to about 80 degrees, which is enough for benchmarking without any issues. So definitely not recommended for long-term use. So if you wanna build such a system for long-term use, uh, you should get a, probably some video cards with those uh, blower fans rather than uh, the top-down fans that I'm using. But for the purpose of benchmarking and producing this video, it did the trick. While having a look at the stats from MSI Afterburner, I also noticed that the GPU clock speeds are lower than what they should be. They're running at 675 MHz instead of the 738 that the GDS250 is rated at. The RAM is also clocked quite a bit slower. So I had a look online and it turns out that these particular cards are the LeadTech GDS 250v3 and they seem to be uh, yeah seems to be like a, a green edition or some lower clocked version of the gds 250 which is a bit unfortunate i had no idea when uh, i bought these cards but at least they've got a gigabyte of vram so that's uh, a highlight um, that will help out a lot with the newer games that we're gonna look at shortly but now let's have a look at some benchmarks. So we are on Windows XP. We can see the orange bar. So that's the Phantom 2 X2 running at 4 gigahertz. And the blue bar is the Athlon 64 X2 6400 plus where you guys, well, I got a lot of comments uh, saying that this processor is holding back things. So in Doom 3, the faster processor doesn't make a lot of difference, but we're getting fairly decent scaling from 72 to 131 FPS. Moving on to Far Cry, here the faster processor definitely helps. We're going from 100 to 136 FPS, so a slight improvement of around uh, 36%, but not nearly as good as some of the more modern games that we will look at shortly. Also the graphic settings, you can see them at the top of the graph. For example, here we have got Half-Life 2. We're running at full HD, but 4X anti-aliasing and 16x and isotropic filtering and this game scales beautifully we're going from 106 fps for one card to 205 in sli fear is another game that scales really well 55 fps one card 
and with two cards it runs at 106 fps so that's a really good outcome in halo i don't have results for the Athlon 64 just for the Phenom uh, doesn't seem to do anything we're going yeah it's actually going backwards we've got 213 FPS with one card and 208 with two and the last game X2 the threat we're going from 106 FPS for single card to 163 with the SLI configuration so we can see quite a few things in Doom 3, Fear and in X2 we are seeing decent scaling with the second card but it's only in Fear and Half-Life 2 that we see basically double the performance with the SLI system. We can also see that the Phantom 2 running at 4 GHz does help somewhat but not nearly as much as I thought. So it turns out that the good old Athlon 64 X2 6400 Plus is still pretty decent and at least in terms of Windows XP retro gaming. Now I had a look at hooking up a 4K monitor. It's a BenQ monitor. It doesn't have DVI, so I used a DVI to HDMI dongle. Unfortunately, I got an image that was a little bit corrupted. So yeah, I gave up at this point. And now we're going to move on to Windows 10. So installing Windows 10 is fairly straightforward. You download the latest version from the Microsoft website. Uh, onto a USB but before that I swapped out the processor out with the Phantom 2 X2 and in with the Phantom 2 X4 and then overclocked to 4 gigahertz. Uh, Windows 10 I ran all the updates which installed a fairly recent NVIDIA driver including the control panel but when I tried to activate SLI I got an error message and the solution is pretty straightforward you go directly to the NVIDIA website and grab the latest and greatest driver and that let me enable SLI. So we're diving straight into some games. Let's have a look at Far Cry 2. So I'll put the detail settings on the screen. We've got very high details and DirectX 10. We're getting around 70 FPS and if you look at the top left corner on the screen with the MSI Afterburner overlay, you can see really good SLI scaling. Both video cards are utilized at over 90% so that's excellent so we will find out that uh, with the more modern games and Windows 10 SLI scaling is actually working really well the next game is Portal 2 we're running high details 4x anti-aliasing and 16x anisotropic filtering we're getting around 100 FPS and once again really good SLI scaling both GPUs are uh, yeah pretty well utilized and yeah decent performance so a really good experience on to a real classic this is battlefield bad company 2 pretty much my favorite battlefield well apart from uh, 2142 and battlefield 4 uh, those three battlefield games i would call my favorite battlefield games so here we are with high details we're getting yeah pretty decent SLI scaling once again but the performance is a little bit low with under 60 FPS so I went back into the options and set the details to medium and yeah the game runs much better now we're seeing excellent SLI scaling so that's another game that works really well with SLI now these video cards have a limitation here I'm trying Rise of the Tomb Raider and we're getting an error so unfortunately these video cards do not support DirectX 11 which is uh, yeah it's a shame that means a lot of modern games will simply not run with these video cards Just Cause 2 that game is fully supported so I went with the recommended details I put them on the screen so you can check them out also, I enabled 4x anti-aliasing and 16x anisotropic filtering. And we're getting, once again, above 60 FPS, very playable and excellent SLI scaling. Both video cards are nicely utilized. But does it run Crisis? Yes, it does. Not that great, unfortunately. Here we are with high details. And yeah, the machine does struggle quite a bit. But this is also because of the processor. Crisis is extremely demanding on the CPU. It doesn't really take advantage of uh, multiple threads. It needs a really high IPC and the Phantom 2 even at uh, 4 GHz is holding things back a little bit. But once again we're seeing good uh, SLI scaling. Both video cards are uh, getting a good workout and yeah with temperatures to match uh, getting close to 100 degrees once again. 
The next game is Resident Evil 5 with high details. We're getting decent performance once again, um, sometimes well over 100 FPS and both video cards nicely utilized. So another game that works really well with SLI. And we have one more game that we're checking out. This is Tomb Raider. I set the details to normal. Uh, I forced 16x and isotropic filtering in the settings and we're getting around 60 to 70 FPS. Good looking game and also runs pretty well. Once again, uh, sound like a broken record, but yeah, excellent SLI scaling in this game as well. So that was a really interesting project for me. The SLI scaling did surprise me, to be honest. I've seen quite a few recent videos, but that's looking at SLI in more modern situations with modern GPUs, and it seems to be not working that well anymore. But older games, at least DirectX 9 and DirectX 10 games, uh, like the ones we tried in this video, they seem to scale really well. Every game was close to getting 100% uh, GPU scaling, which is fantastic. So we are almost doubling the FPS by adding a second uh, video card. And these games are demanding enough that the processor isn't holding things back. We did run into quite a few issues. So firstly, don't go with the default drivers that Windows 10 recommends. Download the latest drivers from the NVIDIA website. And we had a lot of issues with cooling. I had to remove the stock coolers and uh, mount a 120 millimeter fan on top. It worked for the project, but it's not recommended. So uh, my advice is if you want to build such a system or check out SLI video cards, go with the traditional uh, NVIDIA default cooling design with the blower. Um, that works much better with SLI. The power supply also worked great for me. I know that buying a Chinese power supply is not something I would recommend, um, but yeah, I'm happy to put <laughs> my equipment on the line, so to speak. Um, it does the work fine for my project. Yes, it's really loud with the fan going 100% all the time, but uh, I'm not really gaming on this long term. This is really just to uh, put some videos together and have some fun with benchmarking and experiencing these cards. The motherboard also works great. So if you're looking for a decent system, to build some retro SLI machines. Yeah, have a look at AM3 Plus. The 990FX chipset is really good for that. It supports uh, SLI and also three-way SLI, which I have planned. Uh, so looking forward to seeing what happens when we add a third card. Will we get decent scaling or is it gonna trip over with three cards? Um, like I've been reading on um, period correct reviews for example but we have a much faster processor and we're running games uh, from uh, way well games that are way more modern than the video card so hopefully this uh, might change the picture a little bit so guys there you have it so we took the GDS 250 in SLI and I listened to your comments we unleashed them with a 4 gigahertz processor to really see what they can do under Windows XP, we saw that there wasn't really much extra performance to extract, a little bit, but not by a great deal. So the Athlon 64 was doing the job just fine. Here the games are simply not demanding enough um, to make a difference, but everything changed when we installed Windows 10 and those more modern DirectX 9 and DirectX 10 games really loved the SLI configuration. We got uh, almost perfect SLI scaling in all the games we tried. So I think if you own such a system and you uh, yeah, hung on to it, uh, waiting for some more modern games, I think you would have had, um, yeah, I think you would have been really happy with the performance. Um, it would have maybe allowed you to hang on to such a system for a little bit longer than uh, with just a single card. But as always guys, what do you think about SLI and this project? Also, is there anything you guys want me to look at with SLI in future videos? Do let me know down uh, below in the comments. I read every single comment. I might not answer every comment, but I take on board all the feedback. And yeah, we can definitely make some more videos happen depending on what you guys want to see. And yeah, guys, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Keep an eye out for Friday. Our weekly video is every Friday, but sometimes there's a bonus video on Tuesday. 
if life is not too busy and I get around to it. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I shall see you soon with another one.